Hello YouTube, it's Paul. Um, what have we got on the bench today as a project? Well, we've got a, um, an Australian Philips FM320 from the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, this unit um, we've got past, we've cleaned it up. Um, added a new power cable into the back of it. Into the back of the radio. Um, this was uh, cut off. So I've done that, all the easy bits. Um, gone through and checked it. Now, um, the radio uh, um, now light, lights up after replacing a reverse um, pole diode here. But it, uh, it shows TX on the display, but there's no power out. Um, RX is fine, so started to troubleshoot, um, asked a few friends that uh, worked on these, and I started testing, uh, started testing the pin diodes in the RF stage. So we have, um, uh, over here, we have a 1N4 double, 4141, I think it is. Uh, 4148 and then we have um, 1S2186GR and uh, one end uh, 2168 so we've got these ones here they're gone those two and this one and this one are both open circuit as well um, I've also managed to uh, source some uh, uh, the main transistor for the radio, which is this BXR here. So I'm going to go through and start dismantling and replacing the RF deck. When I have more, I'll show more. All right, so this is the schematic and the area that that I'm working on. I'm trying to find a pointer. All right, so D50's already been replaced. D27, D23 is what I'm about to work on now. And then I'll remove the RF shield from underneath and we'll work on D22, D21. We'll do, an, um, we'll, do we'll replace, uh, I think it's Q, uh, Q23 which is the main uh, final. And then we'll do an on-air test and see if we've resolved the problem. Thank you. Okay, just tested the new diode um, that I'm about to put in. So that's all fine. Prepared the, the surface, removed the parts, the first two, and going to install those now. Okay, so... Um, I've installed the two diodes, so that that junction there, that sorry, uh, that junction, oh sorry, that <laughs> that junction there, that junction there, and that junction there, it's all been resoldered, and I've done a quick clean. You have to remove this RF lead uh, from this point right there, lift it, and desold it. Flip the board. And uh, let's just pull this out of the way. The quarter wave. There we go. So they've both been done. I haven't cleaned that surface yet, but I've put um, on the positive side, I've put uh, dabs of solder to the board to make sure it's a good connection. Okay, to get access to these final two diodes, uh, this one and this one, we have to remove this whole back cover. So there are there is a screw here, a screw on this side. We have to unbolt the the um, output transistor, and we have to desolder here, desolder there. And it looks like this whole panel will move forward. 
Okay, you need to remove this screw from this side, which is the heat sink to the transistor. And I need to remove, in order for the panel to drop forward, uh, the direct uh, RF connection here and just desolder this resistor here. Okay, where are we at? Um, we've done the diodes. It did t it's a lot of fiddling and messing around, which is good. Uh, we've also replaced the BLX68, the output transistor. And what I've done is mark on the top of all of my work which points I've actually replaced. So I can track in the future if I ever need to pull this apart. All right, we'll flip it over. Oh, why it's so blurry? It's on wide angle. All right, so replace this. All right, the, that's the BLXR68. Uh, the 1N4148 done that, I've uh, replaced this and those two diodes there. I'll start uh, reassembling now. Okay, whilst I was here, um, I decided to replace the MRF629 by 2 because it's so hard to get back to it. So I put in some fresh ones, so that was here and here. And that looks like being complete now. Um, so I will start uh, reassembling. Okay, whilst I was there, I pulled the front face off, gave it a clean. Put the, just put some of the new flippers which I had floating around off other radios. The radio is now complete. I haven't put the RF cans on yet. So let's have a look. We've plugged her in, got antenna in. All right. All right, it's receiving. Okay. Now let's see if it's TXing. Um, what have I got to go? I've got it going in through the RevX meter, which is over here on a 20 watt setting. All right, so if you remember last time, the TX light would come on and there was no power out, no meter. Oh, wow, look at that. We've got uh, showing three watts. All and on the meter over there, we've got it showing three and a half, four watts. All right. I think that's a win. I'll start finishing it off and put the covers back on. Okay, the covers are back on, and I would say that this one is done for now. It's just a standard 320, no repeater. Uh, restored the microphone. I bought these um, around about well, two weeks ago from a uh, good friend. And uh, they were actually covered in mud. I didn't take any pictures. They were just radios which I purchased to use as spare parts for any other 320s that came in. Um, but not liking, not, not liking to junk radios, I, I pursued, asked a lot of questions of people in forums. And, um, uh, after we got, after I found the source of what I believe happened, which on this one, all the indicators were reverse polarization, maybe at 24 volts. And, uh, it's taken out all the diodes in the... Uh, input stage 
and it obviously affected all of the RF output stage as well. So after um, what have I, I spent about uh, all up about four and a half hours on this radio, including the cleaning, and it's now good to go onto the shelf as a uh, fully operational radio. Uh, the only thing I don't have is a flipper uh, side and movement. This radio may get a repeater put in it, a uh, repeater mod put in it. However, for the moment, task done. Very happy. Thank you very much for Rob Dot uh, and and team and uh, Graham and Jeff and everybody else that is focused on restoring old radios or at least putting them in the hands of people that get them operational again. Thank you very much. Until the next video.